Hey everyone, welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to Miracle Monday, everybody. What's going on? How's everybody doing? I really wish we could have um, some praise music. I really, really do. That's like what is needed, okay? Um, but I just want to welcome everybody. Welcome to Miracle Monday. It's your girl, Sam. It's your girl, Sam. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Lisa, what's going on with you? What's going on, Elsa? Elsa fellow church, possible change church member, maybe. Hey, Mikey, what's going on? Hey, Mo Betta, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Hey, Mr. Chad, how you doing? Thank you for saying you love my shirt. It's from uh, The Finicky Wife. Um, I'm going to, gonna go ahead, you guys, and add my girl Erica, because I'm running late today, because I had to get my spirit right, y'all. I had to get my spirit right. I had to get my my head together and so i am coming to you live with you know some fresh emotions y'all so i'm just gonna be real because i can't i can't be any other way y'all know me y'all know me y'all know me y'all know me i can't be no other way so we gonna go ahead let me add my girl erica to the live where's erica Hey, how are you doing? My beautiful friend, it is so good to see you. It's good to see you too, friend. You look beautiful. As well, always. thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to see you this morning. I mean, this after I'm so used to being live in the morning. Excuse my car, y'all, but I am so happy to be here. Well, I'm excited for you to be here too. And I'm sorry, my girl, I was running late because I had to get my spirit together. You already know, but I'm going to make this a quicker, a quicker than normal Miracle Monday. Okay, guys, I'm going to be better on time. That's one thing the spirit put on me is I need to be better on time. So anyway, I'm going to be better on time. We're going to go ahead and get this party started. Erica, you can pray us in. Yes, Father, thank you so much for another Miracle Monday. Yes. Thank you, God, that as we gather today to glorify your name, I thank you that you're about to move in such richness. Yes, and God. such clarity that you're going to use Sam in such an amazing way that's going to bring so much vulnerability and transparency yes. for where she's at and where others are. And I just even prophesy and I decree and I declare miracles in every home, yes, in, yes. in their workplace, in their car, wherever they are, God, touch their hearts and their minds today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Perfect. All right, you guys, so I'm going to turn off the comments. I thank you guys for joining us and everything like that. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, thank everybody for buying it. Whoever buys a badge, I can't see it until I turn back on the comments. So I'm going to go ahead and say thank you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, so let me go ahead and turn this thing off. All right, so you guys, I need you to go to Matthew 7, 24. Matthew 7, 24. Um, for those of us that are a part of the Change Church family, including myself, Pastor did speak on the scripture, but this thing hit me so crazy that I felt like if you weren't watching Change Church, you don't know this sermon. And so I'm not going to preach this. I'm not going to talk about it the same way, but yeah. I think that this passage resonated so crazy with me that I have to talk about it. So shout out to Dr. Darius for being a, 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 a gosh, I don't know. That man got his ear to the Lord's mouth because wow. he was preaching. And girl, I was like, dang, how do you, you must have cameras in my house because I'm <laughs> definitely, this is where we are. So whoever's changed, don't turn it off now though, because there is, there is a word for you that I have. Mm. And if, even if you have to hear it again, or even if you have to hear it a different way, and maybe you can apply it to your life, it still doesn't change the mm -hmm. meaning and the power of this message. So let's go ahead. Matthew 7, 24. I'm going to read it. Okay. Let me make sure I'm telling you what version I'm reading it from. The New International Version. So Matthew 7, 24, and I'm going to go. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Jesus. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. My God. 
But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Wow. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew mm. and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he, has, he taught as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Oh my God. All right. So that concludes the reading of this word. And so y'all, the I, it's going to be a really funny title. The title of this message is Three Little Pigs. Okay, and I know it's going to sound crazy, but there's a reason that. why I say it's called The Three Little Pigs. Because as soon as I heard this word and I, I really understood it, yeah. I thought about The Three Little Pigs. Anybody heard of the story of Three Little Pigs? Yep. Anybody, you heard of it, Erica? Yeah. <laughs> what do you know about The Three Little Pigs, Erica? The Three Little Pigs, you know, one of them built it on foundation a good foundation, the other on straw, and another one on, I don't know if it was sand, but it was the one that, you know, the good old foundation is the one that lasts. <laughs> right. There you go. But that's a bit of bridge version. Very good. You was listening in elementary school. That's how I know. There you go. You probably got an A in that class, but yes, three little pigs. So y'all thought about this nursery rhyme, this fable about the three little pigs. Never thought about it in this way, but I likened this to the scripture. It connected me with that. But we got three little pigs. One pig built their house with straw. One yeah. pig built their house with sticks. The third one built their house with, uh, with bricks. So it was straw, sticks, bricks. And yeah. a big bad wolf wow, came my into God. town, and he hucked, and he pucked. And he blew the first one's house down. Yes. And then the second one, he did the same thing. The second, the first pig goes to the second house, and they hide it in the house. And they're like, the big bad wolf comes around, boop, 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 boop. And he says, and I hop. And I pop. And he blew the house down. And so yeah. they all, now they're like, okay, we got to go to another place. We, he, he about to get us for real. So they yeah. scurry. They run. They get to the third house. And the third house is a house made of brick. The third pig oh made his house a brick. Yep. And they're in the house, and they cuddle together. The big bad wolf, as we know, he going to show up. So as they get comfortable, here's the big bad wolf and the big bad wolf, and he huffs and he puffs. <laughs> And he blows, and he can't blow the brick house down. He blows again. He gets he gets a little disrespectful. This is the Sam version. He starts knocking at it. He starts trying to do other things to it because he cannot huff and puff his way down this house, okay? This house is not going down because it's made out of a solid foundation. And I think you guys can already connect the dots between this scripture and the three mm -hmm. little pigs, this fable that we've been told all of our lives and I thought about it and I said to myself that a lot of us don't even realize it but we we are building our houses out of straw and stick wow. straws and sticks because as soon as a storm comes in your life as soon as something oh unexpected some email Woo. some text message some phone call something happened at your job something happens with with the, with the number on the scale shoot that throws me off uh if something with your family happens, something with your friends happen, and as soon as a storm shows up, mm. oh, the, the enemy knows what storm to create for you. For some of y'all, it might be a relationship. All the enemy got to do is send the right looking man at the right Woo! time, and you all the way thrown off. For some of y'all men, it's the right looking female at the right time, and you all the way thrown off. And it just takes the big bad wolf, in our case, wow. our enemy. Satan to come around, create that perfect storm, and he huffs and he puffs and he blows a lot of our houses down. My God. The interesting part of the fable that I think is that, you know, we have this third third pig and he goes and he, they all have the same understanding. Okay, so yeah. they all started as three little pigs. They all Dang. knew that they had to build a house. They all knew about what materials to build their houses with. But the last one, for whatever reason, decided he was going, probably took a little bit more time to build that house. 
Probably took a lot more energy to build a house. Bricks are heavier. Wow. Sticks are lighter. Straw is lighter. It's easier probably to find those things. But he built his house, and that's the house that lasts. It's the right. house that stands. That when everything else starts blowing and that big bad wolf comes right back around, that house is standing very, very firm. Come on. And I want to so challenge great. you guys because I realized in the last week or so that sometimes my house is not built on the right foundation. That that yeah. big bad wolf comes right, right, right back around at the right time saying the right thing. And he blew my house down. Come on. And I'll tell you what my house is built out of. Um, and I think, Erica, you might align with me on this. But I'm extremely empathic. Anybody else an empath on this dagger on live? Anybody else an empath would identify as being extremely empathic? You an empath, Erica, would you say? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Y'all, I, I found out a couple years ago that I, I somebody told me, uh, you know, do you realize you're an empath? And I'm like, wow. no. You know, I didn't even know what that was. I looked it up. I Googled it. I found that I fit the, I fit the criteria to a T of being yeah. an empath. That I would feel yeah. people's feelings. I didn't yeah. even have to know them. I could be on I could be on a, a social media post and I could feel the heart of the person that was hurting. Mm. And it would it would I mean I would have those same thoughts, same have those same feelings. It would I mean, literally have me out for a couple of days if I experienced the energy of somebody wow. that I, I mean that heaviness I couldn't shake, I couldn't get rid of. Yeah. And I realized in these last seven days that bringing somebody to me that I feel strongly for Jesus. can get me into the mentality of trying to trying to save them, trying to make it better, trying to wow. do everything in my power, everything, dropping everything, doing everything to make sure that they're okay, going completely out of my way. I've always done that. I've always been yep. the kind of person that if someone needs me, say I'm going to show up. If someone right. needs me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put everything that I got to the side, every feeling, every errand, every everything that I know I need to do, every job assignment, whatever, I'm going to put that to the side to be there for my, for that person, for whoever needs me, for whoever I feel my heart goes out for, who I, who I need to show up for. And that's not a bad thing. Not right. a bad thing at all. That's a strength. Right. Exactly. But why is it that empaths seem to deal with a lot of health disorders? We got we are higher risk for heart disease, anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation. I mean, empaths mm -hmm. feel it all. And I had to start to understand for myself, why is it that me as, a, as an empathic person and being there for people, which is, again, not a bad thing, why is it that my house keeps blowing down? As soon as Come somebody on. needs me, my house blows down. Woo. That big bad wolf knows to send the right person that tugs at my heartstrings at the right way and everything that I can think of, everything that I got on my schedule, every task that I have to complete, all of that goes to the side so that I can save this person, so I can save the situation, so I can make it better, so I can influence them in some way to, to make a positive shift in their atmospheres. Not, not really conceptualizing or understanding that if I am the one to save, then it's a shallow foundation. Come on, come on. That's that so I'm good. actually building their house out of sand, out of, out of, out of rock, not even rocks, I would say straw and stick. If I am the one who is responsible for building that house back up, that's My actually God. not the firm foundation. The firm foundation is the brick. The firm foundation is the rock. The firm foundation is not me because I waver, because I'm here and I'm there. And a lot of times we, we continue as, a, as, as an empath myself, we continue to put ourselves on the merry-go-rounds of a lot of people's mm -hmm. lives. We try to save, we try to save, we try to do, we try to save, we try to make better, we try to do, we try to save, we try to do. We, we put ourselves on this hamster wheel and we feel all these emotions and we feel the weight of the decisions and we feel the pressure to make it better. We feel the pressure to, to change the circumstance and to My shift God. their mental health, to shift their situation, to Ooh. make, like, again, the pressure we put on our own shoulders. It wears us down, it gets us lethargic, it makes us sick, and then we wonder why this person doesn't get healed. Come on. Why doesn't it shift? Why doesn't it get better? At least not for a long time. 
might be a temporary a temporary fix, a temporary band-aid that you place, but you are not the rock. Come on. And I had to have a, a, a coming to Jesus moment with God because I realized that God was telling me, you know, this week that I I, I was wearing myself out, y'all. I remember one day I was on the phone with somebody. I'm like, my heart is hurting me. I mean, I I got chest pains. Like I'm I'm really struggling right now. Yeah. And, you know, I, I kind of kept struggling with that and struggling with the chest pains. And I was like, okay, well, if I if I have to go to the hospital, I'm, I know who, who I'm, I'm just texting this. Not, you know, y'all, I, I worked in domestic violence, so I strategize everything. I'd be like, mom, if I send you, if I send you the happy face emoji, call 911. I'm going to send you my location. You know, that, yeah. that kind of situation. But anyway, I had these chest pains. And God was telling me in that moment that, like I'm putting all this weight wow. in my life on me to make someone else's life better, or to to save this person, or to to. And that's not a bad thing because I I love that person dearly. But the reality was is I put so much energy into wow. that that I was losing me. Jesus. I was losing the things that God had on my spirit to do. Wow. I found myself being lethargic and sad. And, yeah. And just not really have an energy for the things that God has on my plate to do. Jesus. And God convicted me in that moment. I was driving and my heart was hurting me. Mm. God said, who do you think you are, Sam? Whew. You think you can save somebody? You can't oh even God. save you. Come on. You can't even save you. Mm. I realized that. I think that my presence sometimes I maybe I, I put more we all do I think we all think that our visible presence our energy our you know uh, our consistency our ability to send a text message our ability to be in the last moment with somebody can save or or do something or change the trajectory of their life and God had to remind me that I don't have that kind of power Woo, I don't crazy. have the power to build somebody's house I don't have the power to lay the bricks down. I don't have the power to stop the big bad wolf from blowing. I don't have that power. It was a sobering moment for me because as soon as I recognized my inability to save anybody, to save your situation, to make it better, then I wow. surrender it to the one person that could. Yeah. Immediately my chest stopped hurting. Wow. My chest didn't bother me anymore i felt light again and i realized that a lot of times that's what we all do yeah it's that child that one child that we have that we want to make it better we want to we want them to heal we want them to get we want yeah. them to go if they're going the wrong way we want to make sure they're going the right way if they're right. sick we want to make them well this that one child that we just put the weight on our shoulders and it's weighing yeah. us down and we think that that one moment or that one text message or one call or that one coming to jesus talk that you're going to have or that one toy that you're going to take away or that one time you take the phone away or that one class that they're going to take is going to save them and god has to remind me that he has that absolutely he has control over that come on but a lot of times we we get so caught up in doing so caught up in in, in the hamster wheel of life trying to make things happen and make things shake that we we dilute 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 ourselves i think it's dilute yeah. it's a delusion that's basically what i'm saying it's a delusion. Yeah. We, we give ourselves the ability or we think ourselves into the ability to change somebody else's life and their decision Ooh. and what they decide to do. We think even with our children that we have that power at a certain age that what Ooh. we're going to say or what we're going to do or what class we're going to take or what we're going to take away, that's going to be the thing that changes them. That's going to be the thing that makes them better. That's going to be the thing. That one prayer, that one, that one quote Ooh. that you decide to send on a Monday morning, then God can yeah. use that. But at the end of the yeah. day, it's God that does the changing. Come on. And God had to shake me up. Because I spent a lot, I was toiling, I was stressed, I was trying so yeah. hard. I was like, what do I do? What do I say? How do I, what do I create? What experience Ooh. do I do to make this situation better for this person? And I had to realize my inability to do that because I couldn't do it for me. 
Jesus. that I tried and I, and I was doing and I was doing and I was like orchestrating and I know so many parents <laughs> that spend their nights toiling and wondering and, and, and stress about how do I make this better for my kids? How do I get this all the way together? What do I do? And I'm here to tell you, you can't do a thing. <laughs> That if you were able to do it, it wouldn't be the right foundation anyway. Jesus, Jesus. That as human beings, we can plant the seed and we mm. can water it. That's right. But it's God that, it's a God thing. It becomes a God thing. It's a God thing for it to grow. It's a God thing Ooh. for it to the right thing. It's a God thing. And that oh is, a, you know, this, a lot of passages, which, you know, Pastor Darius brought this up yesterday. He was like, a lot of people look at this passage and look at it like, oh, you know, this is about um, a, a Christian versus unchristian home. Like, this is Christ mm -hmm. Christian and secular. So the, so the firm foundation, the rock foundation is the foundation of, of people that are Christian and following Jesus. And the other foundation is somebody that's just in the world, listening to the world, going culture's way and completely regard disregarding God. But the scripture says in, in, in verse 23, which I've never seen there before, so shout out to you, Dr. Darius. I'm going to make sure that man gets his credit because he definitely put yeah. this in my spirit. Yes. But he says, therefore, whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. Mm -hmm. And then, then the 20, on 26 it says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice. Meaning both were hearers of the word, meaning both were Christians in the church, meaning both heard the sermons that we heard, meaning both people are on this Miracle Monday right now, meaning both wake up and do their Bible app or do their devotional or go to sleep and pray. Both yeah. people are hearing the same word, but one is putting into practice. The other one is going rogue. And what I saw Woo! in myself in me trying to save another person, another situation, mm. another, another storm in someone else's life, me trying to stop it, me trying to block it, me trying to make it better. And don't, don't mistake me. There are things that God or people that God has placed in other people's lives so that you can utilize your gifts, your talents, your resources to make their life better so that you, he, he puts you, he yeah. places you perfectly for that season. But don't you ever forget that as a, you are an instrument, you are just an instrument. Come on. You're not the savior. Come on. Woo. You're an instrument that the savior can use. But you, That's my right. friend, a parent, a sister, a husband, a wife, yeah. you are not the savior. It is not what you are going to do. It is not what you are going to say. It is not the sermon you are going to make them listen to. It is not what you do not have the power or ability to save. That is up to the creator of the universe. You can be, and I think a lot of us feel the pressure that we need to figure out a way to save someone. Come on. Save them from what you, save them from the oncoming train. You see the train coming and you're like, dang, I don't want this train to wreck. I love them too much. I don't want this to happen. And God had to tell me, hold up, I might be using the train. So I might be using the train and it might be not be the way that you think. You see, for some parents I know, they'd be like, I see my, my, uh, my husband. I see my daughter in this relationship and I know this ain't going nowhere. I know that he ain't the right one. Or you might be that home girl with your home, with your friend and you talking to her and you're like, girl, I know you in a dead end relationship. I know he ain't right for you. I know this is about to end up in a terrible situation. And you can see the train coming. But if anybody knows, it doesn't matter what you say, how you say it, on what day you decide to say it, it's when they decide that they want to listen or they want to do. When that storm comes, when that big bad wolf shows up and he starts blowing, he starts huffing and puffing and blowing their house down, that's when they decide to say, you know what, this may not be the, this may not be the house I need to live in. This may not be the relationship I need to put my time in. It's only when that big bad wolf shows up. But it's not because of anything that you say, do, what time, da-da-da. And we put that pressure on ourselves. Yeah. We all do. That's right. There isn't That's a person right. I know that doesn't battle with feeling the pressure and the weight 
right. of trying to save and 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 help the people around them and want to get them from their situation want to see that they they have more to life more want them to get out of that negative relationship wanting them to get into the positive relationship wanting them to get into therapy wanting them to go to that class go to that school go to that college join that team there's a lot of things i want you to go to that rehab i'm in somebody's house right now i want you to go to that place i want these things for you but if you know if you ever been in this position like myself you realize you can't do it for them and so for somebody on here who is burdened with the responsibility of someone else's life's choices Jesus. i'm coming here to let you know that it's not on you come on and that the my only God. way that the chest pain in my chest resolved was when i gave it to the one who could Ooh. that it wasn't any sermon i was gonna send it wasn't any time I was going to show up. It wasn't any call I was going to make at a specific time on a specific hour. It wasn't that that was going to save him. It was just the power of God. God. Come on. And I had to that. surrender truly to the power of God. Woo. And so some of you guys... On the other side of that, maybe you 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 going through something, and every time a storm comes into your life, that big bad wolf shows up. Your house is blowing mm -hmm. down. You're in despair. You're in you're in turmoil. And I'm here to tell you, if every time a storm shows up, your house is upside down, inside out, and you mm -hmm. don't know what's going on, that means your house is built on the wrong foundation. Come on. Come on, say My that. My first scenario was people that are trying to save people that are building their house on the wrong foundation and realizing and recognizing that you ain't the right foundation. But the Ooh. second type of people is people that see that the storm keeps coming and every time a storm hits my marriage, every time a storm hits my household, every time the bill can't be paid, every time that, that supervisor at my job talks to me crazy, every time I get an email from my job, Every time my spouse looks at me sideways, every that's when it goes tornado Ooh. levels come up. There's a storm hitting the household mm. and the and all the walls fall down. I know you y'all may be still together, but y'all walls are coming down every single time a storm hits y'all household. I'm here to tell you that you may be hearers of the word, but there's something that's going on. Something ain't being put into practice. That's what the come Bible on. says. That's right. That's, that's what right. the Bible says. Bible says that if there is a storm, that could yeah. be financial, that could be relational, that could right. be psychological, that could be, oh my goodness, there could be a number of ways, physical, yeah. a physical storm hits your household. And as soon as that storm shows up, your house comes down, I'm here to tell you, you building it on the wrong foundation. You building it with either straw or sticks, yeah. but not rock, Come not brick. And like I said, in the three little pigs, that big bad wolf showed up, and he was coming to he was coming to steal, kill, and restore. Mm -hmm. And we have a very real enemy. We can That's call right. him big bad wolf, but that yeah. would be calling him something less than what he actually is. Come on. They said he's he is like a lion. He is like a lion. He is like he is like him. He's not a lion. He don't have that kind of power, but he's like one. Amen. prowling, waiting for his, uh, his moment to strike in your life. And he uses that same type of storm. Wow. The same type of storm that always blows your house down. Woo. What blows your house down? Jesus. What storm comes into your life blows your house down? My God. Is it a breakup? Whenever you, every time you break up with somebody, your house is blown down. Woo. Every time I find you, you hit that, that the account and there's zero money in the account, your house is blown down. Wow. Is it every any time that there's an issue at your job and Jesus. you feel like you gotta have a confrontation with your manager, supervisor, you get that email, you get that text message, whatever from your from your job, and there's something else you need to do, your house is blown down. Jesus. Is wow. it financial? Is it, I mean, there's so many different ways. It's from family. If your mom mm -hmm. calls you on the right time at the wrong day, your house is blown down. Mm. Is it your marriage? 
Every time there's a fight or something like that, your house is blown down. What blows your house down? We all have an area. And I've already shared mine. Yeah. It's a savior complex that I deal with. Yeah. It's the pressure I pull, uh, put on myself to save someone. And I have to recognize I don't have that power to save. That's Ooh. what blows my house down. There's oh, only I... one of shoot, there's one, one of many things that blow my house down. <sighs> but the uh... only way that I had to build my house on the right foundation was recognizing when it was built on the wrong one. Come. That's so good. That's so good. So some of you guys, there may be some situations in your life and you, you can recognize where your house is blown down. You depressed, you can't get out of bed. You crying, you're emotional. You don't have the motivation to move forward. And I'm here to tell you that your house is built on the wrong foundation. Wow. A person, situation, circumstance. Biblically, it shouldn't blow your house down. A diagnosis shouldn't blow your house down. That doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't rock you. Because listen, the storms of life is going to rock you. But it's learning how to build it on the right foundation. I'll never forget that. I was listening to Joyce Meyer, and Joyce Meyer was talking about um, her her ups and downs and her moves. And then she was she was a moody individual. And listen, I can identify with that. I'm moody too. So this was... She's a moody individual, and she was saying how she her goal was to not not avoid storms. Mm. Her goal was to remain constant in them. Jesus. That no matter what storm came, she didn't change. That mm. her faith didn't change. That her energy didn't change. That her mm. lifestyle didn't change. That her eating habits didn't change. She yeah. didn't change. Storms came, the wind blew, the rain came, the thunder and lightning hit, but she didn't change. Ooh. And I, I was like, man, how does that happen? Like, you know, if I don't get a parking space on the right day, I'm anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know me? I'm the one who's going to ask you. I don't care if we're going on a date. I don't care if I want to meet up with some homegirls. Anybody that know me on here, they can say that I am not a fan. Look, I got some hearts in the chat. Somebody know me on here. I do not like bad parking. I will leave. I could drive an hour and a half to get there. If the parking is bad, say I'm out of there. I am gone with the wind bullseye. It makes me, it throws me off. And so when she said that on that day, I remember I was parking and I couldn't find a spot. And your girl was having some real hyperventilating issues because I could not find a spot. The parking spaces were so tight. People pulling out, in and out. And I'm yeah. like, Jesus, Lord, help me find a spot because it's, just, it's getting to be too much. It's getting to be too much. And God was like, parking got you like this? And all the enemy had to do in my life to get me off track was to make parking extremely difficult. Right. And I know that sounds crazy and I'm telling on myself, but it's the truth. I had to realize that there's, if I'm going to be rocked by parking or if I'm going to be rocked by traffic or I'm going to be rocked by time frames, if I'm going to be rocked by a phone call or a text message, what is my house really built on? Jesus, come on. Is it really built on the right foundation? Woo. If as soon as something happens in your marriage, and I'm in somebody's house, if so, as if soon as something happens in your marriage, and you willing to call it quits, you put the you call in the, the divorce, you 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 hitting up all the lawyers, you say, oh, we done, I'm out of here, packing up my bag, we gotta we gotta go, baby, pack up your get your shoes on, we gotta go. If that's you, I'm here to tell you, your house ain't built on the right foundation. Come on. Jesus, my God. Woo. If as soon as a, a, a man, is like you see your friends, you go to a wedding or there's people that I don't know because they are not married. As soon as they see somebody in a, in a friend circle that gets into a relationship, they get into desperation mode, desperado. 
They take out all the requirements and standards they normally have because they don't want to be the one friend that don't got nobody. And you allow Come yourself on. relationships and settle below below your standards, building your house on the wrong foundation with the wrong individual, and then wonder why six months later, seven months later, a year later, two years later, you sad, messed up in therapy, running Ooh. up bills because you decided to build your house on the wrong foundation before Come the on. absolute wrong reasons. Come on. There's some people that are making money and you making money in ways that you know you shouldn't be. And you wonder yeah. why when it's up and when it's down, you in and out, you, you, you figure it out different ways, hustling, doing different things. And you're like, oh God, help me in this one situation. I need you Ooh. right now. And God's like, I ain't in this. You building your house Say that. on the wrong foundation. Ooh. You're doing it culture's way, not my way. I ain't got nothing to do with this. Don't call me. Don't call me. <laughs> Don't call me. Jesus. I'm not listen, that's what I would say if I was God. I'm sure he doesn't say that. I'm sure he says, call me. I mean, because we know that he's we we know that he's compassionate, full of love, unfailing love. He's slow to anger. He's a just God. So I know he's gonna answer the phone. But if I was God, I'd be like, girl, bye. <laughs> For real. So yeah. you gonna do this thing again? Girl. Don't call me. I told you not to go to that club looking for that man in that way. Girl, don't call me. Right. But I, I make a joke. But again, we all do it. That's right. Yeah. We all do it. Yeah. We build our house on the wrong foundation. Erica, is there ever a time where you, you could say in your life that you're like, you know what? I'm willing to admit that was built on the wrong foundation. A lot. <laughs> Do you want to give an example? Give an example most, for the people. Maybe somebody of, can most resonate with you. I mean, I can give you an example what you said about the empath. I am a bona fide 110% empath, and I'll meet I someone, that. and I kid you not, the Lord, literally, I met someone, that the person I told you about recently um, that passed away, the Lord gave me and told me, like, he reminds you of this person and your cousin. And I'm like, what? But my cousin, the Lord told me, was like, is an alcoholic. And the other person was just very absent minded. But the closer I got to this person, immediately I trusted them. But come to find out, it was they were exactly who they were when I first met them. I mean, mm -hmm. the Lord will tell you, even if you feel like you're not hearing from God, even your body will feel weird. You will feel uncomfortable. And so this just happened recently. I've been going through this my entire life where I will meet a person and I'll feel a certain way, and it's like you see exactly who they are, but then right. it's like that goes out the window because now you you like, oh, they're great, oh, they're sweet, oh, they're kind-hearted. Maybe it was me, and then at the end of it, it's an ugly situation, and it's like, no, you saw this the whole time before it gotten ugly or gotten to this point. That's so good. So you're basically saying you seeing the best in people. Yes. And, and even though you, you see the signs of otherwise, you still try to believe the best and not see the negative, not see the red flags that are waving. You're like, you know what? No, they're a good person. They're telling me the truth. I'm going to believe the best about them. I'm going to believe the best until it smacks you in the face. And you, your word is so accurate because that's exactly what it is. And I got so tired. That's why this word is so profound because I got so tired of bumping my head and seeing the red flags and ignoring them that I read a book. And exactly uh, what you just said is called, I just learned this yesterday, it's called reverse projection. So you what? know how you and me, yeah, you know how you and me like a narcissist or a sociopath and they're project upon you what they're doing so like if yeah. you're faithful they'll say you're cheating you be like huh but they're just projecting but reverse projection is because sam is an empathetic woman she loves god she always see that other people love god as well because now it's a reverse projection what you see is now you're projecting that on them but in a positive way wow that's what empaths do Yep, and yep, and it's, I just learned this yesterday, and it's called reverse projection. Yes. Well, y'all, I need to, I'm, I'm actually about to be, <laughs> if I wasn't on live with y'all right now, I'd be looking this thing up. But mm -hmm. I, again, what you're, what you're talking about is something I struggle with, too. 
Because when I'll go into situations, I'm like, well, they, they've got to be thinking this way because that's how I think. They've got to mm -hmm. be doing it. They're doing it another way. They've got to feel that way because if I was doing it that way, that's what I would be doing. And it's like, no, sis, they don't think the way you think. They ain't doing wow. it the way you want it. And we have this expectation. I remember my therapist told me one time, she's like, you breaking your own heart by setting these expectations for other people. Ooh. She's like, you're, you're setting expectations for people that have never demonstrated the ability to meet those expectations. Come on. So you're expecting somebody to be faithful that ain't never been faithful. You expect somebody to be honest they ain't never been honest. You expect somebody to be sober that ain't never been sober. You expect somebody to be good with their money and their finances when they never been good at that. You expect somebody to do certain things for you because you you have this you have you're like wanting to believe the best that they can do something. That's right. But and I'm be with some somebody might there may be a parent that you keep on wanting to put them in this position, wanting to put them in this idealistic position Ooh. that they're the they're the mother you want them to be, that they they're the father you want them to be, and they ain't never been that your entire life, but you continue to put them in this category and so every time they don't show up as the mama you wanted them to be or every time they don't show up as the daddy you want them to be you're devastated you're broken you're hurt you're down and out for several days and god's like oh this is who they've been that's so you good. breaking your own heart setting expectations for people that have never demonstrated the ability to do any of the things that you say i remember meeting with some women they have dealt with some, you know, issues with their mother and, and their father and things like that. And it's like my, I, I was, you know, I, I keep saying to my, my mom to do this, this, and this, and this. And she just, oh, she just hit me with this today. Jesus. And I'm just so disappointed. I'm so wow. frustrated. I'm so this, and I'm wow. like, but your mother has never responded Jesus. the way that you expected her to. So why did you wow. expect on this Thursday that she was going, she was going to respond in any other way? We break wow. in our own hearts, setting expectations of people that have never, I, I can't say that enough. That must be for somebody on this live. We're breaking our hearts, trying to set expectations and narratives for people that have never demonstrated the ability nor the capacity to do, to love, to be anything that you, anything that you expect them to be. Woo. And can I say what that is? Jesus. Yeah. Building your house on the wrong foundation. Come You're setting your in, in this situation, that house is your expectations. You building a house, which your house is expectations, and you're building it with straw and sticks because it ain't never been brick. Ooh. It has never been a solid characteristic of them. That is you so you're building this expectation, utilizing brick. And for some of y'all, it may be your ex. Come on. You may be saying to yourself, he going to do right this time. I mean, he done came back with the flowers. He done came back with the ice cream. He know I like that kind of music. He taking me to the right spots. He ain't doing nothing. It's been so peaceful. It's been so amazing. It's been so this and that and the third. And it's like, hold up. Yeah. Everything's been nice and happy. And then two weeks later, and I always say two weeks because it takes two weeks usually. Two weeks later, something happens. And you Come like... On. You know what? I don't. I can't understand why he doing this. I never thought mm -hmm. he would do this. I mean, I told him, and he did. And blah, blah. I'm like, but you are setting expectations, yes, for someone who has consistently showed up in a certain way. So why do you think today is different? If nothing changes, nothing changes. Come on, wow. If that person is doing nothing to make it better, what makes you think? It's going to be better. Come on. The Bible doesn't say hearers of the word change. He says, Woo. blessed are they that are doers of the word. We have already heard that faith without works is dead. So if you're not doing and you're not putting into practice what you are hearing, then it is dead. Woo. Then you're building your house on a rocky foundation. Wow. And today, wow. I'm coming at y'all asking you, what house would you mm. say you're building? My God. You may listen to me every Miracle Monday. I've been on Miracle Monday, doing Miracle Monday for two or three years now. Yeah. You might be on every single one. Yeah. From Real Talk Kim 
the Erica yeah. Talks, you might have been there through the whole journey. Yeah. Oh, and Leandria. Leandria Holiday Driver now. She's married. Um, yeah. But you've been through all of these Miracle Mondays. My but if God. you are listening to me every single Monday, which I'm yeah. not mad at, keep listening to me. But if you are not applying, if you are not doers of the word, how can you expect to see the fruit of that in your life? How can you expect yeah. to see the house be built different if you're not building it with different things? Come on, that's right. We're, if we listen to a sermon and then we just go on about our lives and our day-to-day -day programming and then we get mad because something happens and it's not what we want it to be and we get mad at God because we, we said, God, well, we, we, I went to church this Sunday. I don't tithe. I don't want on um, Friday night Bible study, <laughs> Sunday night Bible study, Monday night Bible study, Thursday night Bible study. How is it that I'm still bothered by this same situation in the same way i'm here to tell you you built your house on the wrong foundation this bible verse is not talking about this scripture Ooh. passage it's not talking about you not hearing the word yeah yeah it's saying you're not doers of the word you're not doing what you're hearing on these Mondays or on these Sundays or on these Wednesdays or on these Thursdays. You have not Ooh. built your house in a different way to produce a different result. And you keep blaming God because it's not happening different. Come on. Jesus. And I'm here to tell you it ain't God's fault. That's it. It's not God's wow. fault. And if we are, as empaths, looking at someone and we are trying, we are trying and doing and creating and, and doing and trying and, and creating and doing and trying and creating Ooh. for someone else to hear something and they'll do it or to see something or we'll show them something or we'll go to something or we'll say something or they'll maybe they'll experience something through us that will change them and i'm here to tell you it's in vain if it's not built on the right foundation that's right that's right that's right because they don't only have to hear you Woo. they gotta do it too and that's Jesus. a choice that only they can make that's a choice that only they can make. And a lot of us are making, are putting a lot of pressure on ourselves for the ways that maybe our children, our spouses, our family are making decisions and showing up in their lives. And we're putting all that weight on us to change it, to make it better, to do something different, to, uh, to implement something. And we're putting all that weight on our shoulders. We're losing sleep over the choices that they are making. And I'm letting you know right now, take that pressure off of you. You're building your house on the wrong foundation. Come on, I want you today on. that if there's somebody that you are holding on to, and a lot of us, it's mamas. Us mamas, we the ones that hold on to our kids like this. We yeah. see our kids acting a certain way, doing certain things. We can't let that go. We feel like that's our responsibility. Some mamas, right. not all mamas, but some mamas, we hold on to that. I'm here to say, yeah. let your kid, let your children go to the only one that can save them. Come on. Because wow. at some point, you can't save your kids. Woo. You know, four or five, you can save them. When yeah. they become more of an adult, adolescent, they making decisions, they talking back to you, letting you know where you can go. They start to see the weaknesses in your character. That's when the only, the only, <laughs> it was so funny. I went to church on Sunday and um, I was talking to a, a, a friend of mine that's in the church and she was saying that a, a woman in the church was saying, no, I want to dedicate my baby to the Lord. And she's like, oh, okay, how old's your baby? She said 12. And my friend was like, girl, she need a baptism. She don't need, she don't need to be dedicated. She need to be baptized. Because at that point, she is able to make a decision. Exactly. And we sometimes, as our kids get older and we have less and less control over what they decide to do, we still hold on to it like it's still our full control in what they decide right. to do or not to do. And I'm here to tell you, relieve yourself of that responsibility. It's not on you, sis. It's not on you, bro. It's on God. My God. Whew. You are building your house on the wrong foundation. So every time something happens with your kids, your house gets blown down. Hey, I'm not saying that's not, that's not a wrong reason for your house to blow down, but it's still the wrong foundation. That's so good. It's still the wrong foundation. Wow. All of us have an area in our lives, as I wrap up, all of us have an area in our lives that are mil that are being built on straw and sticks. Yeah. All yeah. of us do. 
all of us do. There's an area where yeah. if that one circumstance happens, it throws us off. We lose in sleep. We get anxious. For us empaths, it's that one, it's those feelings, those feelings of heaviness that keep us up at night. Mm. And we allow it to destroy our day, mess us up. And if you, anybody that has been an empath for a while, I've known their empath, that they are an empath for a while, there's ways to handle it so it doesn't disrupt your day-to-day -day functioning. That's so good. That's so it's good. It's being built on the wrong foundation. Mm. Because what, if you are an empath, let me see some hearts in the chat so I know I'm not talking to just myself. Anybody that's an empath in here, let me see some hearts in the chat because this is advice for you. Yes. Maybe it's just you and me, Erica. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. Look at these hearts. Here they come. Okay, here you see the hearts? In. I see okay. them. Yeah, it's, it's coming okay. in. Okay, well, I, I don't know why. And it's a lot of them. Oh, <laughs> well, let me give you. Oh, now I see them. Why did you see them before? With, besides point. Besides point. I'm, so anyway, long story, I was about to say, why did you see them before I did? I don't want to see it simultaneously. Okay. So for those who are empaths, you have to know that when we, what we do, what we tend to do, which is why we have such anxiety, heart attack rates, we have a lot of, we hold a lot, is that we have this savior complex. That's what empaths, we, we have savior complexes. And so we are, tend to be the bait for a lot of different personality disorders on the spectrum. Let's just keep it 100. One of the main ones that you can read about is narcissists. Narcissism and narcissists tend to prey on empaths. Why? Because empaths are easy targets. And because we are extremely empathic, we are, tend to be people pleasers. We tend to put ourselves and all of ourselves in the relationships that we're in. We're extremely loyal. And so we, we are great supply. And so great. anyway, long story short, in order for us to be able to handle and put our build our rocks build our houses on the right foundation as we deal with our empathic feelings is when I feel an empathic feeling. Mm. I was taught this. I have to immediately go to my war room. Wow. If I feel the heaviness of somebody, I don't hold on to it. I don't try to make the phone call. I don't try to go all over the place trying to research and get resources. I don't yeah. care what the situation is. I will. I have to have time with my creator. I have to take the pressure off of me. God gave me those feelings, yes, but yeah. not for me to hold on to and fix it myself, but for me to surrender to him and for him to give me the wisdom on how to move with these things. So empaths yeah. tend to put a lot of pressure on themselves to make certain things happen and to save certain people and to do certain things and i'm letting you know now the best way to handle with those feelings of heaviness and sadness and whatever you're feeling from other people that pressure you put on yourself it is best to go to the throne instead of going to that daggone phone come on you you says i can throw my phone you are I, preaching no. I can't believe, <laughs> i'm about to run to this meeting i wish i could stay i'm gonna watch the replay because you have no idea how many people you bless and include in me. So, my God, you are Thanks. anointed for this. I love you so much, sis. I'm about to run in this meeting. I love okay. you. I'll see you next week. <laughs> All right, sis. See you later. So, y'all, I want to. I want to say that a lot of us deal with this, but we have to. When we feel those feelings, you do not hold on to those feelings. You surrender him to the one, the only one that can do something about it and allow God. And when I say allow God, that's not a momentary decision. That's like, I, what I do is I pray and then I, I give it to God. I write it on my board. I walk away. I worship. And I don't just move. I don't react quickly. I don't allow my feelings to pressure me. I worship. I pray. I listen to God. And then it drops in my spirit, a still small voice, not the loud blaring voice, but a still small voice would be like, send him this. They need that. Do this. Do that. You know, send them I love you. Tell me, pray for me. And like little small voice, not not something, not a loud, because a lot of us listen to the loud blaring voice in our head. Text them, call them, do something, make a decision, run, do, do backflips, do a word. Like that loud voice is not typically God, because he ain't putting that, he's, he, it's a still small patient, because God ain't pressed for time. Still small voice. He's in control of time. Remember that. Still small voice. So if we, I've been told that before by spiritual people that if you feel a pressure to say, I think it was Joyce Meyer actually. If you feel pressure to make a decision, she purposefully does not make a decision when she feels pressure to make a decision. She said because the enemy uses pressure and uses that moment in time to then have you make a brash decision 
without taking the time to understand what you're saying, yes, no, or whatever answer you have to get. So do not make a decision in the moment that you are being pressed because usually the enemy uses that pressure to bring out a fruit in you that ain't in you, that shouldn't be, in, you know, that the Holy Spirit can bring out. Let's just say that. So anyway, you guys, I'm going to conclude with that. Which, what in your life, which house, let me say that the right way. What area in your life is being built on straws and sticks? And not brick or rock. So when that big bad wolf comes, as you know, he's going to come. Them pigs knew that them, that big bad wolf was going to come. Which house are you building in areas of your life that matter? Are you building it with stick in your relationships? Are you building it with stick with your family? Is it sticks as it relates to your work life? You have no balance. Is it sticks as it relates to your social media in the comments? Is it sticks as it relates to your friendships? Is it sticks as it relates to your dating life? What area in your life are you building with the wrong foundation? Identify it. The second part, surrender it. Put into practice what God has called us to all to do. It's not to carry it. It's not to hold it. It's not to make it better. It's not to do, 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 do. It's to surrender it. It's to acknowledge it, surrender it, and be obedient. Acknowledge, surrender, obedience. Acknowledge, surrender, obedience. It's not about you. Don't forget that. It's not about you. It's about God. It's about what he's doing, how he's using that storm in your life. How is he using it? Don't let the enemy get you in this because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But allow God to use it to make a better, stronger, storm-proof house. And that is the word for today. That is the word for today, y'all. Thank you guys for tuning in to Miracle Monday. Um, I hope that that was a word that did something for your spirit. I hope that it challenged you. I hope it edifies you. I hope it challenges you to make, to start building your house on the right foundation. All aspects of your life, I look at it with different foundations. So if it's, uh, if it's your family life, is it built on the right foundation? Your marriage, is it built on the right foundation? Relationship with your kids, is it built on the right foundation? I want to challenge you to look at the different areas in your life as you go into this week and you see how you're rattled in certain areas and you see how that storm comes and it completely blows that house down. I challenge you to start surrendering that specific area and knowledge that area and surrender that area to God and be obedient in how he tells you how to handle that storm. Okay, so I hope this was a word for you guys. I hope you love this message. I hope, did this, did this speak to only me this week or did somebody else need to hear this word? Did somebody else? Oh, I see hearts in the chat. It makes me feel good, makes me feel good, makes me feel good. Thank you, Jesus. That means God was moving and talking and um, I, I'm, I'm just grateful that God uses a wretch like me. Lord, yes, acknowledge, surrender, acknowledge, surrender, obedience i think it's interesting i think somebody said in here friendship and control sam okay she's saying control be an issue for her and friendships are an issue okay i see that i see that i love that hey annette i'm glad you watched this i hope you enjoyed it thank you abelise i appreciate you sis uh i see bb london oh thank you guys that makes me feel so good y'all thank you jesus thank you god for using me so i'm just glad that this is a word for the people and i will be praying us out right now and i will be uploading this 
this situation, this situation right here, this situation, this Miracle Monday, this situation um, to my YouTube, okay? So just be on the lookout. I'll be, um, I'll be uploading and it's going to be called The Three Little Pigs, okay? I think that's a cool title, Three Little Pigs. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pray. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Annette. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, subscribe, share. Um, if this word did something for you or you want to share it with somebody else that maybe needs to be challenged in this area. I think it's a word for everybody, honestly, because we're all building houses in different areas. I mean, we just are. And so just be, be you know, it, go ahead, send this thing out, share it, like it, um, comment on it. I want to hear what your thoughts are. So anyway, let me go ahead and pray us out for the today. Happy Monday for everybody. Let me go ahead and pray us into the week. Daily Father, Lord, I just thank you, God, for this day. I just thank you, God, for everything that you're doing in, around, and through us. Lord, I just thank you for the word that you've put on my heart today. I thank you, God, that you, you, Holy Spirit, you spoke through me. You did that, Lord, because I had no idea what, what I was going to say, how this was going to go. I had it all jumbled in my head, but Father God, you knew how to deliver this message. You knew what you were saying, and you knew the words that I needed to say in order to reach the people that were watching. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for using a wretch like me. I'm just, I'm just humbled by you, Lord. I just am humbled by you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the things that you are working out in my life in and through me. God, I just thank you. And I thank you for the things that you're working out around me, Lord, that I want to work in, that I want to, that I want to get together, that I want to fix. But Father God, only you can do it. And I surrender to you that right now. Lord, forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for wherever, wherever we feel like our house is being blown down. If there's a house made out of sticks in our lives, we want to surrender that thing right now, Lord. We want to give it to you. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for building our houses on the wrong foundation in multiple areas of our lives. God, we surrender those things to you. We want to get, we want to make it obedient to Christ. We want to make these thoughts that make us think that we can save, that we can control, that we can, we can do, we can, we can whatever, perform our way into whatever we're trying to get into. And God, I surrender those thoughts to you right now and make them obedient to you. Because God, the only way that we can move forward, the only way that we can move forward successfully and make the impact that you have created for us to do in this life is to be obedient, to not only be hearers of the word, but doers, to not only build our house because of the way you're telling us to build it, but build it the way that you've asked us to practice. And Lord, that is to surrender and allow you to help us build and allow you to direct our building and allow you to give us the ingredients to build a foundation. Lord, we love you, Lord. You are the right foundation. You are the rock in which our house stands. And so Lord, I just praise you, God, for this word. I thank you for the hearts that it hit. I thank you for the ways that it has convicted me in my own life. And Lord, I just pray for every single person that is watching. I pray that, God, that you give them the strength. You give them the ability. I don't know what they're facing this week. I pray that you give them everything that they need to face those storms. I pray that you give them everything that they need to be constant, to remain constant, that even though the big bad wolf is coming and it's huffing and it's puffing and it's trying to blow the house down, it won't. Father God, I pray that you give them the strength. I pray that you give them the wisdom to be able to face each and every big bad wolf, each and every storm, the way that you have called us to face it, that we surrender it to you and Lord, we obey, obey the commands that come after. God, I pray that we can walk in obedience. I pray that you give us the strength to walk in obedience. I pray that we are, you give us, you give us the oxen spirit that just goes when you tell them to go and sits when you tell them to sit and be still when you tell us to be still. God, I pray that you give us that spirit, that willing spirit to run when you call us, to do when you call us. I pray that we have that this week. Give us the strength, give us the will, give us the motivation. Help us, Lord. We need you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, beautiful people. Thank you for joining me for Miracle Monday. Um, again, I'm going to upload this to my YouTube channel um, so you can re watch it on the replay there. Um, and again, I say like, comment, subscribe to my channel. I'm excited uh, for what God is going to do and use this word for, okay? So, amen, y'all. Love you guys. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.